The average UK house price has flown up to £266,000, which means that despite everything that's happened with interest rates, UK house prices are very close to their all-time high. Or are they? Yes, this is what you see all over the news, but there's a little bit more to this than meets the eye. And when the team and I dug into the data a bit, we realised that the complete opposite has happened and that maybe the famous UK property bubble just burst. So in this video, we're going to break down what's been happening in the UK property market. And at the end, I'll explain why this burst bubble could be good news for investors. By the way, in case you don't know, my business partner Rob and I write a property column in the Sunday Times and our business buys more than £100 million worth of property per year for our high net worth clients. There's a link in the description if you want to know more. So in order to explain what's currently happening, I first need to talk about something that's not been far from anyone's mind over the last few years, inflation. So obviously we're used to talking about property prices in terms of the number of pounds they cost to buy. Well, yeah, is there any other way? Well, as it happens, there is, and we'll get to that in a moment. But by this normal measure, the average property price, according to Nationwide, is £266,000. This isn't an all-time high, but it's not far off. The crash that was supposed to happen as all the post-COVID excitement wound down and interest rate rises took effect, well, it didn't. Prices peaked in the summer of 2022, and they've fallen by less than 3% since then. But there's something missing from this, which is the impact of inflation. Inflation of course lifts the price of everything and even when the rate of inflation is coming down prices are still going up they only go down when we have periods of deflation which are very rare so at whatever point you measure the prices of bananas and healthcare and haircuts are pretty much always at an all-time high so when it comes to an investment asset like property it's worth asking how much of the change in values is due to general inflation and how much of it is specific to the product itself, in this case, property. Now, if you want to own a home, you have to pay the price either way. So it doesn't really matter why the price has gone up. But for investors, this question can make the difference between a great buy and a complete dud because you need to understand what the value is today and what the property market might do next, adjusting for inflation, which is what's known as looking at figures in real terms. When you analyze the market in that way, you can understand whole different nuances in what you see. Because sometimes, like right now, the data is shocking. Nationwide helpfully publishes stats showing house prices adjusted for inflation. And when I looked at these recently, I couldn't believe what it was telling me. Because if you adjust historic house prices for inflation and compare them to today's average house price, you'll see that the average UK home costs £266,000 today and also costs £266,000 all the way back in the second quarter of 2003. That's right. When you adjust for inflation, houses are actually 13% cheaper cheaper than they were 20 years ago in the middle of 2004 and are the same price as they were in the middle of 2003. I know you probably still won't believe me because this is not something that you'll often hear. So let's reinforce it with this graph that shows that inflation adjusted prices are indeed the same as they were in both 2013 and 2003. There are a couple of super important things in this graph that we'll be coming back to later on to explain what property investors should make of this data. But before we do that though, it's worth digging into a couple of objections that I sense you might have. The first is, well, you pay for a house, whether it's your home or an investment, using your wages. So if wages haven't kept up with inflation, then none of this matters. That's true. But wages have in fact kept up with inflation and then some. In 2003, average weekly earnings adjusted for inflation were £450. Today, that figure stands at £514. So the average wage has beaten inflation over 20 years and the average property hasn't. You might also be thinking, well, that's not true for where I live. And you might have a point. Nationwide doesn't publish a regional breakdown, but I had my team apply the same calculation to the regional data. And this shows that prices in London and the Southeast have indeed gone up by more than inflation. London prices specifically are up by about 16% in real terms. Whereas in the regions that we've been investing in recently, notably the North and Yorkshire, inflation adjusted prices are significantly lower than they were all the way back in 2003. By the way, if you want a more detailed breakdown of each region and our current investment recommendations, you can download that 
in the description. So there are two very important things for investors to take away from this. The first is that we might be able to stop worrying about a house price crash because it's already happened. The COVID bubble that we had from 2020 to 2022 or so, when it was impossible to even secure a viewing on a property and everything was going to sealed bids, that is over. Just look back at that chart. Once you've adjusted for inflation, that mini boom hasn't just unwound itself. Prices are significantly lower than they were when COVID first came into our lives. We've had a property crash. It just happens to have been a silent property crash. In fact, inflation adjusted prices have gone down by 15.6% since 2022. The reason no one believes that is just because it's been masked by inflation. Effectively, property stood still while everything else went up fast. And from pretty much everyone's point of view, this silent crash is the best type of crash. Nobody's ended up with a property that's worth significantly less than they paid for it, causing them to panic, forcing them into negative equity, and having all the other knock-on effects effects for the housing market that a typical loud property crash causes. At the same time, from an investor's point of view, rents have gone up. They've actually gone up dramatically, which is improved yields. And the same inflation that's been causing you problems every time you go to the supermarket has at the same time had the helpful effect of eroding the real value of your mortgage debt. But the second takeaway is far more important than all of this because it gets us away from speculating about what property prices might do in the short term and gives us the perfect example of one of the core mechanisms that makes property such a strong long-term investment. Because surely you'd think that if property prices have only just kept up with inflation for more than 20 years, surely that means it's been a bad investment over that time. But let's see if that's been the case. Let's say that in the middle of 2003, you bought the average UK property for what it was worth at the time in pounds, which is £125,000, and you used a mortgage to pay for 75% of that. So you put in £31,250 of cash and took out a mortgage for £93,750. Fast forward to today, and that average property is now worth, as we know, £265,000. And let's say that you decide that now is the time to sell it. After paying off the mortgage you took out, and assuming it was an interest-only mortgage, so you owed exactly the same on the last day as you did on the first day, you're left with £171,250 in your pocket. That's £140,000 more than you put in. Or to put it another way, you've made an 8.5% annual return over the time that you've owned the property. A period, remember, when inflation-adjusted prices have gone nowhere. And yes, before you point out that I haven't included stamp duty or capital gains tax or anything like that, that is true. But I've also not included the rent. That 8.5% annual return comes purely from holding a mortgage, which is fixed, and owning an asset that's gone up in line with inflation. So who needs a boom? In fact, who wants a boom? Because a boom is normally followed by a crash. So unless you have the foresight to get out at the top, it's a painful and potentially dangerous business. But prices ticking up just gently in line with inflation over multiple decades, it leaves you in a pretty incredible position. But the real question is, how can investors take advantage of this particular silent crash that we're having right now? Well, watch this video next to find out.